Yo guys, what's up? This is Ari in the Air, professional paraglide pilot and filmmaker. Today we're talking about stalls. Everything from your first stalls to your hundredth stall. I'm going to give you some tips so you can progress faster and understand what's going on up there a little bit better. Ready? See ya. Okay, thanks for being here, guys. So to do this, we're gonna go through a couple videos of myself and my own progression. We're gonna start with some stalls that I did back in Iquique, Chile three years ago on my first acrobatics glider. And then we're gonna move through my new acro glider and then just a normal cross country glider. And I'm gonna show you the kind of progression that I'm talking about. In the beginning, when you learn stalls, it's important to do it supervised and over water. You want to have a life jacket, you want to have a rescue boat, and you want to be over water because when you stall a glider, it can be a little rowdier than you expect, and it can be a little harder to handle than you're totally ready for. So you want to do it with supervision, you want to do it with a life jacket over water. And so for the first stalls, your instructor will essentially tell you to go from hands up, and you're going to look at your glider, you're going to pull the brakes a bit, and then you're going to slowly progress until you stuff the brakes all the way below your seat board and you kind of hold on to the bottom of your harness. The reason that they want you to do that is so that you don't panic and let go of the brakes because the glider can shoot. Obviously, as you're here, you slow the glider down. Once it stalls, it falls behind you. If you go hands up at that point, the glider shoots really hard and can go under you. You can gift wrap at the worst case scenario. So, in the beginning, they tell you just to hold the brakes totally down. But what ends up happening when you do that is that the glider goes into a configuration where you have so much brake pulled that the tail tucks and you get into what we call the shit zone where the glider flaps around and is really difficult to control. It's not in a stable configuration whatsoever. So you really want to mitigate and minimize your amount of time that you spend in that shit zone where you have the brakes really far down. On the other end of the spectrum, you have a like an acrobatics dynamic full stall where you're going to swing up, stab the brakes, the glider will stall, you basically go hands up, the glider reinflates and shoots really hard, and you catch it as it comes forward. That is something you really have to work up to. We're going to talk about that and everything in between. So to begin with, let's check out this video from my first stalls here in Iquique. And basically what I'm doing here is I check my box surroundings, make sure I'm in the right spot. I don't want to have to throw my reserve in a place that I'm not willing to throw my reserve. It's important to remember that when you're doing your first stalls, you really want to adjust your harness so it is as upright as possible. And before you start, you really want to sink your ass back into the back corner of your harness. Also, you want to put your feet underneath you. What you're trying to avoid is making yourself long so that any time the glider rotates that you have inertia or when you rotate you have inertia. So you really want to keep all of your parts, your head, your feet, everything in between the risers and vertically in line with the glider. That gives you the smallest rotational um, inertia and it helps you move with the glider and the glider move with you. So, here I start pulling down on the brakes and I would say that I'm making a mistake here by waiting too long. I'm really deep in the brakes but I'm waiting too long. And the glider stalls somewhat asymmetrically. The right side of the glider stalls first and so the glider kind of rocks back like this and then I come into a stall and luckily I manage it and I just come out of it, right? But really in your first stalls, I recommend that you be more assertive with the brakes because you would rather have a more dynamic stall than a symmetric stall. If the glider stalls asymmetrically, in the worst case scenario, the glider stalls asymmetrically and comes back onto itself and it literally will take half of the glider and just fold it into the lines. And my friend on this trip, he did, an, he did a stall, he waited too long, he did it asymmetric and it folded the glider up into his lines and he had to throw his reserve. So 
You really want to be commanding with when the glider is going to stall. You can slow yourself down a bit, but don't just sit there and wait for it to stall because then A, you're being kind of scared and you're not being very um, assertive, and B, you're waiting for the glider to stall and it can stall asymmetrically. So you really want to slow it down a little bit and then really one, two, three, stuff it. That way you have control of how the glider is going to stall and you can stall it symmetrically. This is probably something like my 30th stall or my 50th stall. And you can see that right away my hands come up and they come to what we call like the backfly position and they kind of brace against the risers. I never grab the risers, but I brace against the risers. It helps protect you from line twist. It also keeps you more connected to the glider and it also kind of gives you a perspective of how high your brakes are without having to look at your hands. The next thing I'll talk about here is a video, same trip, same glider, and I'm actually gonna do a helicopter, but for this, we're actually gonna talk about deep stall. So one of the objectives here that I'm trying to help you with is if you can get really, really comfortable with all the different kinds of stalls, then you can really choose the best stall for the scenario. And a lot of paragliders talk about stalls being your reset, uh, like if you get a cravat or something, and I can tell you that four times in my paragliding career I've needed to stall my glider for safety reasons. Only one of them in a cross-country scenario. Um, twice I've done tumbles and had big collapses that became cravats, but only one time on a cross-country, full speed bar, huge collapse, huge cravat, and had to stall the glider. But in that instance, I didn't do a full stall. I didn't stuff the brakes and let it totally fall behind me. I took the glider to deep stall and I was feeling it and I wanted to get the most effect out of the stall with the least amount of altitude loss and the least amount of uh, wrestling and all this stuff, right? So you really, if you're really, really in tune with the stalls, then to clear a cravat, you don't have to do a big full stall, a big messy tail tucking full stall. You can really like, only do what's absolutely necessary and take it and in that instance that I'm talking about. I only had to take it to deep stall. And once it went to deep stall, the wingtip blew out and I was able to just pull a stubilo, pump a brake, and it popped right out. So it's important to know deep stall. And here you can see I pull the brakes. Once the glider wants to go back, you see I raise my hands, but then I immediately come back onto the brake. So as I'm here, I pull on the brakes, pull on the brakes, pull on the brakes, flying the glider wants to stall, but before the tail tucks and it goes back, I let up on the brakes, which makes the glider want to shoot. I again pull the brakes, and then the glider rests overhead. This is called parachutal. This is called deep stall. And at that configuration, you are literally going vertical, and your glider is not flying like an airfoil. It is working like a giant parachute and you go down vertically. It is in this configuration that the glider becomes very yaw unstable, meaning that it wants to twist on the yaw axis, and that's how you do a helicopter. You let one side go into tail slide while you let the other side fly, and now you have a helicopter. This is a really good thing to practice and to be really versed with because this is actually for most intents and purposes, as far into a stall as you need to take for safety purposes. As far as a reset, you don't actually have to do a full tail tuck, full stall every time. A deep stall usually will stop the glider from flying and you can control it overhead and then you can either let it reset or you can continue to pull the brakes and take it into tail slide, which we'll see here in a minute. But here I let one side fly and pull a little brake on the other and I'm in a helicopter, right? So that's deep stall and a great thing to practice. On this next one, we're gonna see I'm here at Pine Mountain and I'm on my Blackout Plus and I'm gonna do a series of three stalls. They're gonna get more dynamic as we go and these, this type of stall I call an acrobatic stall where basically I'm pulling the brakes real hard so it makes it fall back in a dynamic way and I'm really giving the glider a lot of authority. I'm giving it a lot of brake so that when it inflates, it can really keep going forward and kind of shooting, right? So as you see, I come out of the first stall and I go right back into the next stall here and I'm getting a little higher and this one I let fly, it takes a little cravat, I pump it with the brake, but I don't miss a beat here and I pull into the third, the most dynamic stall. 
as the glider comes forward, I really let it come forward and I let it shoot. That's an acro stall. They're really super fun. And that level of uh, competence with the stall is really going to be the fastest reset. If you really have something go on and you really just got to stuff at one time, bang, and you really want to know that on your first try, you can make that glider come out clean. You're not going to have to take it into a tail slide and get it stable and then get your composure and then let it out slowly. Stall the glider and let the glider out pretty much in one motion, right? So the next thing that I'm going to talk about here, I'm flying this little cloud that I did some testing for little cloud earlier this year. This is a Graccio 23 meter cross country glider. And what I'm going to do here as I pull on the brakes, you're going to see the glider begins to hinge in the middle. And then I let off of the brakes like I'm going to go into deep stall. But instead of going into deep stall, I persist on the brakes enough that it comes into tail slide. And then I settle into a stable tail slide. And this is the kind of thing that I want to iterate as you practice your stalls over and over and over. You really want to be able to do every kind of stall. You don't want to only be able to do a full tail tucking full stall. You really want to be able to do that as well as a deep stall, as well as entering into deep stall and then either letting it fly, keeping it in deep stall or taking it to tail slide. That is the ultimate control that we're talking about that is possible here. You really, it's not just one thing or the other. If I want to stall the glider really quickly and let the tail tuck, I can do that and then I can bring it back into deep stall and then into tail slide and then deep stall and then to tail slide and deep stall or let it out. There's a finesse and a touch that you can develop if you practice enough that will allow you to configure your glider from flying forwards to flying backwards and everything in between really comfortably, really easily, really safely. So this is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Remember, as you're learning your stalls, you really want to do in a place that you are safe. You really want to check your gear, your reserve. You want someone who knows what they're doing, supervision, over water, life jackets, rescue boats. Don't mess around on your first 15 stalls. It can be more of a handful than you imagine. But as you get more and more versed, as you get 50 stalls, as you get 100 stalls, as you get 200 stalls, you're really going to start being able to play around with a different kind of stalls and really have a great time practicing your deep stalls and practicing taking deep stall to tail slide and back and all these different things. It's super fun. And I Hope that this video helps uh, show you what's possible in stalls. It's not just a one-time SIV thing just to get it over with. It really is a super fun maneuver that you're going to enjoy doing for the rest of your paragliding career. And I hope this video helps. If it does, consider subscribing and turning on the bell notifications. Also, I sell gear, so if you need anything, you can email me at airyintheair at gmail.com or put any questions you have in the comments section below. I answer them all. Thanks so much for being here. Fly safe, and we'll see you on the next episode.